<clears throat> Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a bookshelf tour. It has been a long time since I've done a bookshelf tour, but I got a new bookshelf and I wanted to show you what I'm doing with it and my plans for this new bookshelf. So we are calling it The Vault because it is actually a rolling cabinet kind of thing. Um, and it, we're actually keeping it under a bed. Um, that's the best way, best place for it. So we're calling it the vault, but it fits a lot of books. So what I have done is I have put in there all the books that I have got like kind of as one-offs. These are all books that I have not read. Normally I buy books for our collection that I've already read and enjoyed and I know I want to read again. But these are all books that I got really cheap um, and I have not read any of them. So I'm putting them all in there with the intention of reading them and clearing it out and then potentially filling it up again. So the plan is to show you the books in the vault and then at the end of the video, stay tuned because at the end of the video, I am going to choose two books to read still in January. I know we're getting close to the end, but I think I can do it. My plan is to read at least two books per month from the vault. So the first book that I choose, I am going to choose based on Chantelle from Chantelle Reads All Day, her Read Your Shelf 2023 challenge. I'm gonna choose a book based on that, based on the monthly prompt. The second book I am going to choose completely randomly so that's going to be very fun stay tuned to the end of this video to see how i will randomly choose the book that i read but for now i'm going to take you to the vault okay here it is <laughs> this is the vault and as you can see i was able to fit a lot of books in here so I'm not gonna go into detail about any of these books, otherwise this video will be way too long. I'm just gonna show you the book and tell you the genre. So here we go. We have <clears throat> Death of a Duchess, an Italian Renaissance whodunit by Elizabeth Eyre. The Watchman's Stone by Rona Randell. I would say this is a romantic suspense or a gothic. Still Midnight by Denise Mina, mystery thriller. The Golden Crucible by Jean Stubbs, an Inspector Lintot mystery. The White Queen. The Superb Novel of Mary Queen of Scots by Frederick Fallon. <clears throat> Strumpet City by James Plunkett, historical fiction. <clears throat> the Kissing Gate by Pamela Haynes. I believe this is maybe a um, historical fiction or family saga. My Lord of Canterbury by Godfrey Turton, historical fiction. The Wind Off the Sea by Charlotte Bingham, also historical fiction. Death of the Fox by George Garrett, a great novel of the triumphs and tragedy of Sir Walter Raleigh. Trinity by Leon Uris, a novel of Ireland. Pride and Predator by Sally Wright. This is a Ben Reese mystery. <clears throat> a Liverpool Lullaby by Anne Baker, a heartwarming family saga. <clears throat> An English Murder by Louise Doughty. How well do you know your neighbors? 
The French Executioner by C.C. Humphreys, Anne Boleyn's Killer, and Her Last Hope. Historical fiction. <clears throat> Hawkridge by Jane Blackmore. This is a uh, gothic romantic suspense. <clears throat> Murder in Montparnasse, a literary mystery of Paris by Howard Engel. Savage Tide by Glenn Chandler. That is a mystery. Because of the Cats by Nicholas Freeling. This is a <clears throat> Van der Valk thriller, so this is a mystery set in Amsterdam. The Suspect by L.R. Wright, a uh, Carl Alberg mystery. The Celtic Riddle by Lynn Hamilton, an archeolo <clears throat> excuse me, an archaeological mystery. Death Comes as Epiphany by Sharon Newman. This is historical mystery set in 1139. The Price of Darkness by Graham Hurley. Mystery. <clears throat> and two novels, The House in Abercrombie Square and The Mistress of Luke's Folly by Elizabeth Elgin. These are Family Saga, possibly historical fiction. I, I'm not entirely sure about that one. All right, so that's row number one. The rows are going to be important. <clears throat> Excuse me. The rows are going to be important because at the end of the video, I will be using them for my random choosing. This is Our Liverpool Memories of Life in Disappearing Britain by J.P. Dudgeon. So this one is actually non-fiction. <clears throat> On Hitler's Mountain, Overcoming the Legacy of a Nazi Childhood by Ermgard A. Hunt. Another non-fiction. <clears throat> Certain Freedoms by R.R. R. Bell. This is a mystery, I believe it's a mystery, set in Russia in 1993. <clears throat> Young Bess, The Girl Who Would Be Queen by Margaret Irwin, historical fiction. Patterns in the Dust by Leslie Grant Adamson. This is a mystery. <clears throat> the Great Railway Bazaar by Paul Thoreau, another nonfiction. Sarah's Key by Tatiana de Rosne, historical fiction. Under a Blood Red Sky by Kate Furnival. Again, historical fiction. The Last Daughter of York by Nicola Cornick, a Tudor novel. Sweet Thames by Matthew Neal. Um, <clears throat> oh yes, this is historical fiction as well. City of Thieves by David Benin Benioff, sorry, historical fiction, possibly historical mystery, I'm not entirely sure. <clears throat> Death and Blintzes by Dorothy and Sidney Rosen, historical mystery. Child 44 by Tom Rob Smith. <clears throat> Mystery Thriller. The Wild Hunt by Elizabeth Chadwick. Tudor Fiction. Or possibly earlier, actually. Oh yeah, no, that one's earlier. That's Wales 1096, 1098. The City of Shadows by Michael Russell. A Missing Woman, Two Mysterious Murders, A City Shrouded in Secrets. 
<clears throat> Ophelia's Muse by Rita Cameron. This is, I'm not entirely sure, could be historical fiction, most likely. <clears throat> The Tudor Throne by Brandy Purdy, Tudor Fiction. Freeze Frame by Peter May, an Enzo McLeod investigation. My Brilliant Friend by Alina Ferrante, book one of the Neapolitan series novels. <clears throat> Necropolis, London and Its Dead by Catherine Arnold. Again, this one is um, non-fiction. Down Cemetery Road by McHeron. McHeron writes the Slough House Mysteries, but this is a, another series that he does set in Oxford. The Sixth Wife by Susanna Dunn. She survived Henry VIII to be betrayed by love. The Cleaner of Chartres by Sally Vickers. Again, historical fiction, I think. The Poe Shadow by Matthew Pearl, Mystery. Islands by Dan Slay, spanning decades, oceans, and continents, Islands is a staggering, profound, and unforgettable epic. The Cellist of Sarajevo by Stephen Gall Galloway. And last in row two is The Book of Ebenezer LePage by G.B. Edwards. I don't remember anything really about this book. All right, row three. Encore Provence, New Adventures in the South of France by Peter Mayle. Darkest England by Christopher Hope. This one is a satire or I don't know. Nights of Rain and Stars by Maeve Binchy. The Physic Book of Deliverance Dane by Catherine Howe. This is um, historical fiction. <clears throat> Rat Catcher by James McGee. You don't send a gentleman to catch vermin, you send Hawkwood. Historical mystery. The Last Train to London by Meg Waite Clayton, historical fiction. Court of Shad Shadows, a novel of Elizabethan England by Cynthia Morgan. 1916, a novel of the Irish Rebellions by Morgan Llewellyn. The Painted Girls by Kathy Marie Buchanan, uh, historical fiction, I think. <clears throat> the Last Bookshop in London by Madeline Martin, historical fiction. The Women in the Castle by Jessica Shatuk. Historical fiction. <clears throat> Bl 
Blood Royal by Venora Bennett. A king, two crowns, and a princess married to her enemy. Sutton by J.R. Moringer, historical fiction. The Devil's Queen, a novel of Catherine, uh, Catherine de' Medici by Jean Calogridis. Victoria by Daisy Goodwin. The Canterbury Papers by Judith Cole Healy. A Death in the Family by C.F. Rowe, a Dr. Jean Montrose whodunit. White Rose Rebel by Janet Paisley, historical fiction. Children of the Tide, a Victorian detective story by John Redfern. The Devil's Making by Sean Haldane. This is a historical mystery. It's set in um, British Columbia here in Canada, so I'm going to use that for my Read Canada challenge that I did not do very much on last year. <laughs> The Light Over London by Julia Kelly, historical fiction. <clears throat> Hotel Pastis by Peter Mayle, a novel of Provence. Kepler by John Banville. Dragon Mead, a novel by Rona Randall. Sleep of Death, a Shakespearean murder mystery by Philip Gooden. Beyond the Blue by Andrea McPherson, um, historical fiction. A Loss of Patience by Ralph McKierney, a Father Dowling mystery. <clears throat> a Mountain of Crumbs by Alina Korokohova. This is a memoir, which is an interesting choice for me because I don't tend to get a lot of memoirs, so I'm not sure what it was about that one that caught my attention. Wallace by Rebecca Dean. Belgravia by Julian Fellows. Everyone Brave is Forgiven by Chris Cleave, historical fiction. Old City Hall by Robert Rothenberg. Again, this is mystery but it is um, set, it's set here in Canada, in Toronto. <clears throat> Goodbye Piccadilly by Cynthia Herod Eagles, historical fiction. In the Company of the Courtesan by Sarah Dunnant, again, historical fiction. A Woman in Berlin, Eight Weeks in a Conquered City, a Diary by Anonymous. 
<clears throat> the Museum Guard by Howard Norman. Murder Suicide by Keith Ablow, a mystery. The Difficult Saint, a Catherine Levandour mystery by Sharon Newman, historical mystery. Death in the Tuscan Hills, an Inspector Bordelli mystery by Marco Vici. Nobody Walks by Mick Heron. This is, um, I believe it's a standalone by Mick Heron. Mademoiselle Chanel by C.W. Gortner, historical fiction. Poison by Sarah Poole, a novel of the Renaissance. The Winter, Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna, historical fiction. Underground in Berlin, A Young Woman's Extraordinary Tale of Survival in the Heart of Nazi Germany by Marie Jalowitz Simone, Simon. The Dressmaker's Dowry by Meredith Yeager. The Queen's Command by Maggie Osborne, a novel of Elizabethan England. The Matchmaker of Ken Mare by Frank Delaney, a novel of Ireland. Wolf Winter by Cecilia Eckback. This is um, a mystery, possibly. Historical mystery set in Swedish Lapland, 1717. His Bloody Project, a historical thriller by Graham McRae Burnett. Cool Water by Diane Warren. This is a novel set here in Saskatchewan, so I picked this up for my Read Canada project. And this next one also, The Garneau, Garneau Block by Todd Babiak. This is set in Edmonton, Alberta, so that will fit again for the Canadian, my Read Canada project. The Magdalene Girls by V.S. Alexander historical fiction. And then The Wild Girl by Kate Forsyth. The enchanting untold love story behind the famous fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm. I loved this cover. I thought this cover was fantastic. I rarely do cover buys, but... And then Rebels and Traitors by Lindsay Davis, an epic novel of the English Civil War. All right, and then row number five is kind of the half row, let's say. We have The Ambassador's Daughter by Pam Jenoff. The Singing Fire by Lillian Natell. Small Island by Andrea Levy. A Strange Scottish Shore by Juliana Gray. The Duchess of Drury Lane by Frida Lightfoot. Midnight in St. Petersburg by Venora Bennett. And Crippen by John Boyne. Okay. There you have it. Those are all the books that I have in my vault. It is time to choose the two that I am going to read in January. And since it is so late in the month, I am going to try and get 
hopefully small books so that I can read them quickly. The Read Your Bookshelf Challenge prompt for January is a book with a or the in the title. So let me see if I can find a small one with a or the in the title. All right, The Golden Crucible by Jean Stubbs. This is an Inspector Lintot mystery and it has 263 pages. So that's the one I'm choosing for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. Now, for the random read, what I am going to do is I am going to spin this spinner. I've got it set up for five, for the five shelves. I am going to spin it. Okay, so row one has been chosen. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 22, 23, 24, 25. So I am going to change this to 25. Oops. <clears throat> and spin it again. And whichever book it chooses, I'm going to start one from the bottom here. All right, 14. I am going to read book number 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, thank you very much. It's another small book, An Old Fashioned Mystery by Runa Fairley. And it has 240 pages. So my two books to read from the vault for January. Okay, so stay tuned next month when at the beginning of the month I will do this again for the next two books to read from the vault. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these books and uh, if you think I should try and work them into my the Read the Bookshelf challenge or books that you hope I will get to right away through my random picks. Let me know if you like that way of choosing books and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.